Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Feeds Matching Deposit from a Customer to Bank Feed Deposit. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well-organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Are in our custom zero homepage, going into the company file we started up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again and duplicating again. Let's go back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, open up our balance sheet report, one of the major financial statement reports, tab into the right, accounting drop down, open up the other major financial statement report, the income statement. Changing the date range up top, selecting the drop down, we want 2022, starting in January, ending in <clears throat> December of 2022. And there we have it, running and updating that. Let's go back to the first tab now and go into where our bank feeds are located, which we uploaded in a prior presentation, accounting dropdown, located in the bank accounts. And then within the bank accounts, we got our bank feed up top that we connected to, managing the accounts, and we're going to go to the account transactions. And then I'm going to go to the first tab, which is the reconcile tab. So we've been basically trying to as best we can construct our books from the bank feeds but now dip it into those areas where we might have a little complexity in doing that and have to come up with some other systems to work around let's go to our flow chart to see what i'm talking about this is from the quickbooks desktop but we're just really looking at the flow of the forms which are the same for any kind of accounting system we're on the customer cycle here and we're trying to think about how we can fit the bank feeds into a customer cycle when we have an accrual concept we have to put in place, meaning we do the work first and therefore has to invoice or bill the client and have to track the accounts receivable. So that would be if we had the type of industry would drive whether or not we would have to do that, right? So if we're in an industry where we have to do that, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, we can't just say, well, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna be on a cash-based system. It's like, well, no. People aren't going to do business with you then, right? So we have to invoice them. So that would be like an accounting firm or that could be like a law firm or landscaping. We do the work, we invoice the client. So obviously the invoice doesn't have any cash impacted or affected from that transaction. So we can't do that transaction from the bank feeds. But then uh, after the invoice has been input, when we get paid, we saw that it might be possible to connect the bank feeds to the invoice, waiting until the payment clears the bank, and then connecting it to the invoice. However, you can only do that if uh, you're getting a payment that is in the exact same amount as the amount on the invoice, and you don't have kind of grouping of multiple invoices or other forms of payments together. Things that can muddy that up 
would be if there's credit card charges or a middle person in the transaction that kind of charges fees or groups the deposits like a credit card company or something like a PayPal or Stripe like that, then it, we might not be able to connect the bank feeds to uh, an actual invoice. Uh, and if they group the payments together, meaning we have multiple invoices, for example, or invoices and sales receipts possibly that are being grouped together by a credit card company or something like that, then it's gonna hit our bank account in a one lump sum of multiple uh, multiple invoices, right, are combined together. And so we're not gonna be able to just match it with the bank feeds. We're gonna have to do the more of a full service system, which means we're gonna have to receive the payment. Now, when we receive the payment, uh, that's when we can deposit it into the bank at that point in time. However, we might need another step there because we might want to set up like a clearing account because again, we might have some system where the credit card company is grouping payments together in a way that we cannot easily uh, group together on our side and therefore put it into a clearing account and then take it out of the clearing account and put it in as a deposit. Now, if we have to do that, then we're gonna be reliant uh, on the bank fees just to match. So what we wanna do is make our deposit in our system the same format, the same dollar amount, the same grouping of money into the bank as will show up on the bank side, which will come through the bank feeds. We still need to use the bank feeds or can use the bank seeds, but the bank feeds will not be recording anything here. Instead, it will be simply helping us to reconcile, which is still quite important. All right, so let's, let me see if I can see what I'm talking about here. Let's pick a, a payment, one of these deposits, and kind of do our same thing where we're gonna like work backwards to uh, get to that deposit amount. Uh, so let me find one first. Let me stop talking while I look. All right, here we go. I found one. Let's take this 150 here. Now, now let's imagine that we have multiple invoices that were in play that are making up that 150. So I'll make multiple invoices and receive the payments on those invoices. And you'll kind of see why hopefully we can't just tie the invoice out to here, uh, but rather we'll have to, you know, basically make the deposit on our end. So let's imagine we're going to go backwards now. I'm going to I'm going to make the invoice, which normally would happen first in our time frame, but now we're going to we're going to so you're imagining this happened first before that deposit, right? So let's say this is customer. Let's make another customer just to uh, customer just to switch things up. Number three, customer three. I'm so creative with my names, my customer names. Creativity is one of my uh, blessings, one of my strong points on making up names. Uh, so then we're going to say this happened on October 1st. Let's say the, the end date 17th. Okay, that'll work, whatever. And then let's go down and say that we sold. Let's just, let's just put a random description, uh, service, service item. Usually we would want to have items that were describing what we sell because that'll make things easier, but that's not where our focus is right now. Our focus is on this grouping issue. So let's say we sold something for $100. I'm not going to deal with the sales tax because again, the sales tax would be, we've talked about sales tax, but that's not really our point of focus here. Noting here though, what is our point of focus is that this will increase the accounts receivable by $100 and the other side will go into the sales account for $100, a uh, revenue account. However, when it came, when the deposit came through, Notice we didn't have a deposit for $100. We had the deposit for $150 because there was a grouping of some kind of multiple deposits. So let's show that. Let's say we're going to approve it and add another. Approve it and add another. And let's say this is uh, uh, customer number four. We'll say customer number four to make a new customer. And let's say this also happened in October oct one oct one and it sounds like a like a username or something oct one act one oct one this is gonna be sales of some kind one and this is for the fifty dollars let's say 
So now the two of these sales add up to the 150. This is gonna increase the accounts receivable and the other side is gonna go to revenue. Uh, so let's go ahead and say approve it and let's check it out then. Let's check it out. As soon as I get the green, go ahead. There it is. The green has told me I can move forward. So if I go into the accounts receivable, into the A to the R, the A accounts to the receivables, the R, as the pirate calls it, R, the R account. There's the uh, 50 and the 100, adding up to that 150. If I go back up and I go to my income statement, now we recorded the revenue when we did the work. So the revenue is already recorded, even though we haven't yet got the money, it went into the sales account here. And if I check that out, checking it out right now man checking it there it is and there it is so revenue went up Mui b to the n now we're also tracking this ar because we have to collect on the accounts receivable that's the accrual component accounts receivable is an accrual account cash isn't involved with it if it was a cash based system we wouldn't have ar but we have to have ar in certain industries because we have to track who owes us the money so if i go back to the first tab I can, I can track internally in the AR with the business dropdown invoices. And we can then see we have these awaiting payment items. These are the ones awaiting payment. Uh, and so we can kind of track those out here. We can also track it by going to our contacts and look at our uh, customers. And we can see the outstanding balances, the outstanding balances. These, these balances are outstanding. Uh, that's not a good thing. That's not a good, but what do you mean? They're outstanding. Anyways, uh, so these are our outstanding deposits. So then if I go back into my business drop down, and then I go into my invoices, I, the, the point is that when I get a payment, let's imagine that the payment processor or whatever is grouping these two together. So we saw on the bank feeds, it hit the bank feeds as 150. So if I tried to just match these invoices to the bank feeds, I waited till I got paid on the bank fees. Let's go back into the bank feeds. And I and I look at that 150, it's gonna be a little difficult to tie out uh, these deposits to the bank feeds. Back to the reconcile. And then let's find that 150. It's actually 150, but 150 is how you say it when you're cool. That's how cool people say it. So anyways, here's the 150. And then, so it's gonna be difficult to match it over here. So if I go over here, I could do it, right? I could go to the matching and say, yeah, that's gonna be this and this. And, I, and then boom, you're good to go. You could do that, but normally that's not the most efficient system because that means you're gonna have to do like a bunch of work over on on the reconcile and the reconcile should be the if you have a good accounting system reconciling should be easy and oftentimes these kind of problems are caused by intermediary uh systems in there like financial institutions like paypals and stripes and there might be fees involved that kind of mess this up as well so this isn't so if you find yourself kind of having to tick off multiple things to tie out to a deposit you probably don't have the most efficient you know, system. You could probably do it better uh, because again, the bank, the reconciliation process should be as easy as possible. So what would probably be better then is you could say, as you get paid, when you, when you receive the payments, you can go into your business dropdown invoices and Xero has this nice system. If I go into the awaiting payment, once we receive payment to click these two off, now I can click these two off and uh, make a deposit of both of them now. And I can deposit both of them at the same time uh, for the $150. And that's uh, great because then I can deposit it directly into the checking account and I'm showing 100, the 50 and the 100 detail when I check this out on the customer side. But when it hits the bank, it'll be there at 150 deposit which will match easily zero will probably find it it'll 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 be able to match automatically 
Now, I want to just throw one more wrinkle into this that could happen, and that is that maybe there's fees that are involved. Maybe you have a, a PayPal or Stripe that's going to have fees that kind of messes up the invoice to, to when you get the payment. Uh, or uh, you might have other kind of receipts that you're also receiving through the credit card company or something for, for not invoiced items, but sales receipt items or receive payment items. If I hit the drop down, receive money. So in that case, you're getting other deposits maybe that aren't simply from invoices that are also being grouped in or you have fees that you're dealing with. Then this system will still not allow you to just deposit it directly into the checking account. That's when you might need a clearing account so that you can put it into the clearing account and then take it out of the clearing account and make sure you deposit into the checking account in the same format as will be seen on the bank statement. So let me see, let me just show you what that looks like uh, if you had to you do that system. And it really depends on how complex and what industry you're in usually and what payment methods you're using. How are you getting paid? So let's go to our uh, bank accounts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another bank account, but it's just going to be a clearing account. I'm not going to connect it to the bank or anything. So I'm just going to say add another bank account and it's going to try to connect it to the bank feeds. And I'm like, no. Uh, so let's say it was bank. I'm just going to choose the Bank of America. And I'm going to say Bank of America. And then it's going to be like, do you want to connect to the bank? And I'm just going to say, no, I just really wanted to set up like an account that's a clearing account, but but they don't care about that. So you don't have to tell them that, but that's what we're doing. So then we're gonna say the account name is gonna be cash clearing account, account type. I'll just call it uh, other, we'll say account number. I'm making up a number and US dollars, mine are in US dollars cause I'm in the US and we typically transact using the dollar as the form of transaction, although inflation is destroying it and uh, at the moment, which is a little frustrating to savers like myself that have worked hard and put them. OK, that you're getting off track. So so now what I'll do is I'll go back into the business and then we'll go into the invoices and go into the awaiting payment and we'll select these two and i'm going to deposit them into the clearing account so i'm going to say uh deposit actually let's do it one at a time so you can kind of see why the clearing account might be you well now i'll keep it here so i'll deposit into the clearing account make up your mind my mind doesn't like making up it wants to change stuff all the time so we're going to say there's the 50. So this will go into our account. Let's choose an account and we're going to put it into the cash clearing account. I should put an account number on it, but the cash clearing account. So it's going to go into the clearing account at 150. So if I deposit it, uh, it wants a reference. I'll just put a D for deposit. All right, boom, 150. So now if I go into my, my balance sheet and update, now we've got in the clearing account, uh, uh, the cash clearing account, the 150, nothing's yet in the checking account and the accounts receivable went back down. So AR goes back down. If I go into the A to the R, R, R matey, we've got, uh, this goes back down and the 50, okay, and then and so, so now the AR went down and we put it into the clearing account and you can see it went into the clearing account, not as 100 and 150, but just as $50. So again, if, if that was the only thing that you needed to do, then you could have just, we could have just deposited this, uh, directly into actually it went in here at, uh, one at 100 and 150. So it's in here as two separate transactions. So this might still be useful here because <laughs> now we're gonna, do, we're gonna transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account. And we're gonna do that with, uh, with one deposit. So then it'll go into the checking account as just one lump sum amount, which is what we want to see because that's gonna be easiest to connect to the bank feeds. 
All right, so let's go back. And now I'm gonna do a transfer. I'm gonna go back to the first tab and I'm gonna imagine that I know that that 150 is now gonna be grouped together when it hits the bank account, right? So that's, what, that's the system what I have to figure out. Now notice that if you have fees and stuff involved as well, then you can also find different systems to use the clearing account to also help you to kind of figure out the fees and how you're gonna deal with the fees with uh, payment processors, which is often an issue if you have like online shops, like a Shopify or Amazon or something like that. There are different systems you can put in place that uh, that sometimes have to deal with the fees, but anytime you deal with a, a PayPal's and the, and the Stripes, those intermediary, the credit card companies, fees can come into play as well, and a clearing account can help you put a, a system to deal with the fees. All right, but in any case, I'm gonna go to the first tab and I'm just gonna go to the transfer now i'm going to make a transfer now i could use a deposit form because i'm depositing into the checking account but when i use a deposit form it will actually show a deposit in the clearing account that is decreasing the clearing account which is like a cash account so that looks a little funny so but you could do that because everything is going into the the checking account but i'm going to use the transfer form because the transfer doesn't look funny on either side, right? Because the transfer could mean a decrease to the to the cash account or an increase to the cash account. So I'm gonna say it's coming out of the, the clearing account and it's going into the checking account. Let's do this on uh, October, October, to, let's go uh, 2022, uh, October, and okay and then we're gonna say let's just say the seventh and it's gonna be for 150 reference deposit all right let's transfer it and then if i go back to the balance sheet and update we've got the clearing account goes away because it's back down to zero checking account has the 150 in it but not two separate transactions for 150 instead having just one 150 150 right there so 150 i thought 150 meant a dollar and 50 cents 50 means 50 cents doesn't it whatever dude 150 you can say it for either 150 or a dollar and 50 cents it's 150 man Okay, so we're gonna go into the checking account. Let's go back into the bank accounts and then uh, drop down here. Let's go into the account transactions and see if the system matched it out now. So I'm gonna go into reconcile and look for that 150 and see if zero picked it up as a match. And you can see it did now, right? So now zero was able to recognize zero was able to recognize the 150 you better recognize 150 that's right uh so there we have it so zero recognized it now so now so but now when i add it all it's doing is reconciling it's not going to add anything new to the uh it's not going to add anything new to the transactions so we'll just reconcile that helps us out with our bank reconciliation so nothing new happening to the financial statements here but still important to do because it helps us with that reconciliation process. We still wanna do bank reconciliations, by the way, just to make sure I would still you know, process a bank rec, which they have a nice report, Zero does. We'll look at it later, uh, but that's that. Let's, let's see how our financial statements have been constructed thus far, tabbing uh, another tab open so I can open the trial balance. You better recognize 150, man, 150. Uh, inflation, I used to be 50. I used to be just fitty, but now I'm one fitty because of infl report reports. Okay. Okay. Focus. Trial balance. And then we're gonna go. Uh there. Okay. So so here's what we have it. So we can see that this is just the balance sheet on top of the income statement, and we're just constructing this thing as we go the income statement stopping or the balance sheet stopping at retained earnings income statement below that so that debits equal the credits is the same thing as saying that our assets 
equal our liabilities and our equity. The income statement is part of equity because it's being squished together in this one number of uh, uh, the current year earnings, which is the bottom line of the income statement, 7609.54, 7609.54. On the trial balance, we're not grouping that in there into the equity, which is gonna eventually go into retained earnings. This is the prior year equity, and then the current activity is broken out in the income statement format accounts.